All right, well, what is going on? Today is 8-4 volume day here at the, uh, the Hilltop. Um, so working on here is uh, the difference between volume and surface area lateral area. So if you think about like a container that you get, um, you know, like um, something in a cereal box or something like that, right? So the lateral area and surface area have to do with the, um, the packaging, like how much uh, area is, is contained in the packaging. Um, where, uh, so for instance, like we got this lovely container right here, right? So um, all the packaging on the outside, that's the surface area, lateral area. The volume is ab about how much space is inside of it. So that's what we're talking about, the difference between volume, lateral area, and surface area, okay? So one thing I want to hit here is uh, for any shape that has two congruent bases, so prisms, right, um, cylinders, uh, any of those shapes, the volume is just the area of the base, okay, times the height. That's it. All right. So volume of a prism, area of the base times the height. Um, this should be cylinder here, by the way. I'll fix that for you guys on your sheet before I print it. So volume of a cylinder is same thing. Area of the base, pi r squared, because it's a circle, times the height. That's it. All right. So uh, if you're looking at this shape right here, for number one, for any shape with two congruent bases, same thing we said, right? Product, area of the base, and height. So um, number one, we've got our base down here, okay? And technically, you could use any side. It wouldn't necessarily matter, but we don't have the length of this. We have to go get it uh, in order to, to figure this out. So we're going to use the bottom side here because we have a length and a width, so we have area of the base. And then the height we know is three. Now, remember, this is oblique, which means it's slanted. So the height is outside. It's not a side of the shape. So this this represents the height of the of the, the shape. So just volume equals capital V H, and then we can fill it in, right? Length times width times height. So here it's seven times four times three. So that's twelve times seven, uh, which is eighty-four yards. And this time it's cubed uh, for volume. And the reason it's cubed, remember, we're doing yards, yards times yards. So uh, just like x times x times x would be x cubed, we're getting yards cubed here, okay? And the second one here, we have a trapezoidal prism. Um, you can see that the, they give you the bases, they give you the height, and then we also have the height of the prism. So this 1.5 is the height, right, of the trapezoid, and this 6, we'll do capital H, um, the height of the prism. So volume is, once again, capital B H. We'll put the formula in, so that's one half the height of the trapezoid, right, times base one plus base two, and then we can use uh, some brackets here, times the actual height of the prism. We just plug in. So it's one half times 1.5 times the sum of two plus four, which is six, and then uh, we multiply that thing by six. So if you think about six, half of six is three, and then we're just doing like three times 1.5, all right, and then multiplying that times six. So if you have your calculator here, get the phone calculator out here, okay? Um, so it's 0. 0.5 times 1.5 times 2 plus 4, and then times six, and there you go. So we get 27. Okay. Once again, that's centimeters cubed. Okay, so to give you units, make sure you give down units. All right, find the volume of the pictured cylinder. Yours will not be this lovely color of yellow, but uh, this big cheese wheel here. So um, same thing. We want to do the area of the base times the height. Here's what we do know, though. So just be careful with this. This dotted line represents 14. That's the line going down this way. So what we really need to do is get the height here, okay? And if you think about it, if this is a right cylinder, now we have a right triangle, right? We have a hypotenuse of 14. We have a leg here of 11. This represents the entire leg. It wouldn't be 22 because then it would be bigger than hypotenuse. So we're going to use our c squared minus b squared equals a squared formula. 14 squared minus 11 squared equals a squared. And then we can just go to work. So 14 squared, I believe, is 196. 
minus 121, which is 75. And this is not going to be a nice number. It doesn't say simple and radical form, so we can just leave it um, just radical 75. We are going to round it. There's no need to simplify right now. We'll just leave it like this, okay? So now we can go to the volume. We have a base, right? We know that the radius here, this is 11, is 5 and a half. So it's just um, pi r squared h, where h is the height of the prism. So it's pi times 5.5 squared times the square root of 75. And we can just type this in your calculator, and you're good to go. So we just do pi, right, parentheses, 5.5 squared, and then times 75. Hit enter. So we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. Remember, the hundredth had two, two zeros. We go to the second number. It's an eight, and I just erased it. We'll bring it back, OK? So I'm going to look at the next number. It's an eight. It pushes that other eight up. So it's 7,127.49, OK? If we're doing a uh, simple theoretical form, this would become uh, 5 radical 3, so this would be, you know, 5.5 squared times 5, and then the radical, and all that lovely fun stuff. Okay, number 4, we have a lovely question here. Uh, we got a lovely prism. Too many lovelies going on here, sorry guys. And then we have a hole cut out of it, okay? So we want to figure out what the volume is of the remaining solid. So we cut a hole out, we want to know what's left of the prism if we take out the cylinder. So... We need to do the two volumes and then subtract them. So the volume of the prism, area of the base times the height, right, length times width times height. So it's 4 times 4 times 6. And then we have the volume of the cylinder, which is just the area of the base times the height again, pi r squared and h. Remember, here's r. This is h for the cylinder. Okay. So uh, 4 times 4, 16 times 4 is 64, and this is inches cubed. We have the volume of the cylinder, which is pi times 1 squared times 6, which is 6 pi. I'm going to leave it in terms of pi right now, because I don't want to round it too early. Okay, it's as approximate, so we can give an exact answer, or we can round it out at the end. So. Um, the prism is going to be bigger, so it's 64 minus 6 pi. That's the total volume, or the volume left over. And if you want to do 64 minus 6 pi, we're going to get 45.1504, right? I'll write that whole number down, and then we'll round it out. So it's approximately 45. And once again, this is inches, so that's inches cubed, okay? All right, cones and pyramids. So um, cones and pyramids once have one base, and then the sides meet at a point. So any shape with just one base, okay, the volume is, it's the same concept, area of the base times the height, but this time we're doing one-third, we're dividing it by three. It's just one-third area of the base and height. That's the wrinkle that comes in with this, okay? Which means if we were to essentially, like, encase this shape, right, okay, in a prism, you can kind of see that this, this is taking up one-third of the amount of space, okay? Same thing here with this. If we encase this in a cylinder, right, this cone is taking up one-third of the amount of space. That is what this is essentially means. So find the volume of the prism below. We do, and this should be pyramid. I will make sure that gets changed as well. I just made the worksheet doing the video for it. So, all right. Uh, so the volume, PYR, is equal to one-third area of the base times the height. So one-third, or it's just like base times height over three, your choice, okay? So the, the base is length times width. So the formula is down first. I plug in 8 times 8 times 10. This is the minimum amount of work I want to see on your paper right here. Show me the numbers you're multiplying together. Put down your answer. I don't want to just see these things going in here. Okay? 
I want to see a random number show up, right? That's 80, and I have no idea how you got it. 8 times 8 times 10, right, divided by 3, okay? And uh, it does not say what to round to. I'll throw that down there, too. Um, so it's just 213 at 0.3 repeating. Um, you can also just leave it as 640 over 3 since it does not go in there. By the way, easy check. 6 plus 4 plus 0 is 10. 3 is not divisible, or 10 is not divisible by 3, so that number is not divisible by 3. So you can check on that one. Too. Like 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, so we know 18 is divisible by 3. Okay, this is a square. Um, let's make a note of that, that this is a regular pyramid. I'll make another on the sheet. All right. Um, so once again, volume is equal to one third area of the base times the height. So one third, 10 times 10 or 10 squared. Now, here's where we're going to run into a problem again. This is the slant height. We want the actual height. Okay. So please remember that if this is 10, this piece is exactly half of that, which makes this five. Okay. So we need to do 12 squared minus 5 squared is equal to b squared, and then we can go to work. Here we're going to get 119, and then this is just going to be the radical. Now make sure this is rounded. So it's uh, 10 squared times the square root of 119. And here we're getting 363.6237372. So we'll round it out. Probably the nearest, uh, let's go like thousandth here. So 363.624. And then 640 divided by 3 is just... Uh, type this in 213.3 repeating so it'll be 0.333 okay um we got number two round of the nearest cubic foot so uh same thing here now remember this is the circle so it's pi r squared h right one third of that so just remember we need uh, we need the height not the slant height so just be careful so um volume equals one third pi r squared h here r is seven so it's one third pi times 7 squared times 24, and we're doing nearest cubic foot, so we're just typing that in. So there's one third, there's pi, we got 7 squared, and then 24, and we're going to get 1,231.5, so that's 1,232 feet cubed, okay? Uh, I did forget here that this should be inches cubed on the first one and meters cubed on that second one. Okay, nearest meter. So once again, volume equals one-third pi r squared h. One-third pi r. Once again, that whole thing is 8, so that's 4 squared times 12. And then we can just type that right in again. So it's, and if you want to, feel free to do the first number. That's pi times 4 squared times 12, not 10, but 12. Enter, and then just divide it by 3, right? Yeah, random 3, great. Divided by 3, there we go. So it's 201.06, so this is going to be cubic meter, 201 meters cubed. Okay, last one here is cubic inch. Once again, volume, 1 third pi r squared h. One third uh, here once again pi that's five so this is two point five squared and then fifteen all right so we got pi times two point five squared times fifteen divided by three and there's ninety eight point one seven so this is just going to be ninety eight inches cubed okay because one third area of the base times the height guys 
these ones on the bottom, you're given the volume and you need to find one specific part. So here, um, we've got a square base, 15 and 15. So it's a regular pyramid. We know the volume formula equals one third um, the area of the base. So that's length times width times the height. We'll plug in. So 1500 is equal to one third of 15 times 15 times x. And then we can just multiply out the first part. One third 15 times 15, okay? So it's 15 times 15, and then divided by 3 is 75. So this is 1,500 equals 75x. We divide out by 75. And we're left here with 20. And there's your height. Okay? You can use units, so 20u, or if it's inches, 20 inches, it's up to you. Okay, here's our pyramid. We have um, a right triangle. So remember, when we do a right triangle, the area for our triangle on the bottom is one half the leg times the leg. Okay, so um, volume is one third the area of the base. So that's one half nine times x, where the six came from, I don't know, and then times the height. So that's times 14. Once again, we're going to multiply all this lovely stuff together. So I'm just going to leave out the x part, but you can feel free to do like the inside part. So in other words, this is one third times 4.5x times 14, and then multiply all that stuff together. So it's up to you. 4.5 times 14. Don't forget that times. All right, it's 63, and then a third of that is going to be 21. So the volume, once again, was 126. That's your one for V. So 126 is equal to 21X. Divide both sides by 21, and we're left with 6. Okay? And the last one is a cone. So the volume is 8 pi. So we know the volume is 1 third pi r squared h. So we do 8 pi here for the volume. That's 1 third pi times x squared times 6. So if we multiply this out, just a third of 6 is 2. So it's 8 pi is equal to 2 pi times x squared. We'll divide both sides by 2 pi. Don't forget the pi's here. They're going to cancel. 8 divided by 2 is 4. It's equal to x squared. We take the square root, and we're left with 2, and that's the measure of x. Okay. Spheres. Volume formula looks very similar to the surface area formula. Remember, that's 4 pi r squared. Here it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. So just don't forget the cube and the 3 going, okay? So we have the snow globe. Consists of a glass sphere for the liquid and other contents. If the radius inside the snow globe is 3 inches. So that goes from the center out, okay? Find the approximate volume of the material in the cubic inches that can fit inside. So volume, that's 4 thirds pi r cubed. 4 thirds pi times 3 cubed. Remember, the radius is 3, so we just plug that in. So, we're just going to do parentheses, 4 thirds. Um, feel free to use that fraction bar in your calculator, okay? Um, so, 4 thirds, move to the right times, and then you're going to do pi, and then 3 cubed, okay? And this comes out to be that will the answers and it says um, approximate volume so this is 113.09 so that is approximately and what i like to do here first is write down the entire answer there's two reasons for this on the exam um, you get partial credit obviously you're going to lose a point for any any mathematical errors bonding errors multiplying errors you have the numbers down you just multiply them incorrectly versus a conceptual error, which is an error in a concept. So if I show you the answer, you see it, and then I round it wrong, that's a point, versus um, I'm putting some stuff down here, and I'm not going to be able to get credit because I can't show all the work. So for example, if I went like, drop that up, I just said boom, boom, and this was wrong. This came out to be something crazy, right? 
I might not be able to get just one point off because I don't have enough. Where if I show you that I'm plugging this in, that I got this, and now I end up with like 114 or something odd for some reason, uh, someone grading will, will see what's going on here. Okay. Two ice cream cone is 11 centimeters deep. So cone, five centimeters across the cone. Okay. Um, and what we have here is it's 11 centimeters deep. So that's the that's the height. Okay. Five centimeters across. That's the diameter. And we have two hemispherical scoops of ice cream on top. So I'm going to put them off to the side. But the diameter of these scoops is also five. Okay. We want to know if they melt, well or not, they're going to like overflow the cone. So we want to know is, is this, right? Question is, um, is this greater, right? If the ice cream is greater than the, the volume of the ice cream is greater than the volume of the cone, then it's going to overflow. They're equal or just perfectly. And if it's less than, then it won't, it won't overflow. So let's do the cone first. Volume of the cone. That's one third pi r squared h to one third pi times. We're going to have 11 squared times. Sorry, don't do that. Five. This is 2.5 of the radius times 11. Got it. So it's 2.5 squared, not 11 there. Put those in the right space. Okay, I'm going to type it and just get the decimal. So we'll have just one number. Okay. Um, so one third. Don't do the e thing. Hit my button there. So we do pi 2.5 squared times 11, and we get that guy. So that's 71.994.83164. That's our volume of the cone. Okay, so the volume of the sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Remember, there's two of them, so we need to make sure we double that, okay? So the volume of the sphere is equal to 4 thirds pi times 2.5. That's a radius cubed, okay? Once again, we're going to double that. So we take a calculator, okay? 4 thirds. Let me do pi times 2.5 to the third, carrot three, right? Um, and we get this thing. So it's pretty obvious that it is going to overflow. But if you had not remembered to multiply this by two, right? you would not have gotten the correct answer. So that's why this is a little tricky. Now I'm also writing this out because if, if for some reason they gave you, you know, you rounded this out, you got 72 for this, and this came out to like 72.136, you may say, well, they're both 72, but just compare the decimals and actually see which one's bigger. So we'll say, will it overflow? We'll say, yes, it will overflow. And say the volume of the ice cream is greater than the cone. Okay, and then uh, here we have a sphere of the volume. So that's four thirds pi r cubed of 1,436.8 miles cubed. We want to know the surface area. Remember, the surface area is 4, just 4, pi r squared, okay? Uh, area squared, volume cubed, so just remember that's the reason involved here, all right? So we're going to plug the 1,436.8 in here. We have 4 thirds pi r cubed. Here we want to divide by 4 thirds pi. We know we're going to get some crazy decimal, and then we're going to take the cube root. So just be aware. What I would might want to do here, okay, is take 1,436.8, divide it by, and do the four thirds first. 
and I get uh, 1077.6. That's still going to be over pi. If you feel like dividing by pi, please do so. Okay, you're going to get some crazy decimal. Just write it down, and then you're going to get left with r cubed. And the last step is just take the cube root here. Right, the index has to match the exponent in order for it to cancel. So we get this decimal. We're going to do the cube root. Um, you should be second square root. There should be a button that has a little box in front of the square root symbol. That's what you want to do. Here, I want to go down to cube root. So that's my cube root symbol. I'm going to do the answer. Or in our case, right, we're going to do 1077.6 over pi. This is the most exact answer uh, to have right now. And we get this. So this is 7.00007030015. That's our exact answer. We're going to keep it, okay? Um, and then we're going to plug that in here. So the surface area equals 4 pi times 7.00007305 squared. And then we do, right, 4 pi times one well, the exact so we're going to do answer okay or go grab it bring it down it's up to you squared and there we go near total number we'll round it off that's 615.7 so that's right 0 0.7 616 here it is miles squared all right homework tonight for you guys is going to be this little lovely sheet right here okay all right and there you go nearest pound so this question for the nearest pound if you notice it says um the water weighs 64 62.4 pounds per cubic inch this is telling you that you need to do the volume so take the hemispherical tank which is a hemisphere and then you is, is a sphere and then you divide it by two so the volume of the hemisphere right the volume of the hemi is equal to one half the volume of the sphere so just do the sphere, divide it by two, and then multiply that out times this, and then I'll give you the weight, okay? And, and you should be good to go. The other ones you're just doing, I need size wash and monument. You're just doing the volume of the pyramid on the top, all right? This one is uh, what's left outside over here from the cone, so just subtract, and then you got these ones are pretty simple. All right, guys, have a good one, and I will see you guys on the flip side.